I'll start with the burning question people have about Vanguard which is its release date. Vanguard is scheduled to go live on the Philippines server with patch 14.8 on April 17th which is next week and then live everywhere else with patch 14.9 on May 1st. Riot have also released an official blog for Vanguard but they've also made a bunch of comments scattered over the main subreddit which I'll cover. Someone asked, will a TFT auto clicker be detectable by Vanguard? It doesn't affect competitive integrity but I've always seen it as a somewhat un fair way to complete the event pass. I personally know a group of friends who boot up an Android emulator and play TFT on a script 24 hours a day when a new event pass arrives. Rider K3O responds with, we've already done some actioning on TFT bots and Vanguard will further help with prevention and detection of those. They are prohibited under section 7.10 of the terms of use and while they're not as painful to players as other bots because it can be inflationary towards top 4 finishes, they still do affect competitive integrity and the actual fun of of the game. So they mentioned that they've already taken action and that there has been some bans for TFT bots. What's interesting is they haven't said how Vanguard will detect TFT botting using emulators. And emulators like Bluestacks are completely legal so I don't think there's a way for them to know whether you're using it for TFT mobile without spying on you. Another writer said that PC TFT will be Vanguarded but mobile TFT won't be. So depending on how people use auto clickers those who use it through emulators might be safe since the emulator uses mobile TFT. Personally, I think Riot could turn their attention to people auto farming the event passes once Vanguard has helped Riot's ability to reallocate resources and rioters to other areas. I wouldn't run it 24 7 because that could probably alert or flag the account if they decide to go down this area. They've shown recently that they're willing to continue nerfing the pass and target whales, so it's only a matter of time until they target this. And because Takashi69 over here has directly alerted the feds, then Riot are definitely more aware of it. Auto TFT farming bans aren't anything new. Riot have issued bans in the past but I'm not sure how recently they've done it. There's also a video circulating around from Thor, a veteran in the hacking and anti-cheat industry, which Riot has responded to. Kernel level anti-cheat gets full access to your machine, hardware and software. I don't like that. I'm a hacker. I've been a hacker for 20 years. Part of my job throughout that was working in the games industry. And working in the games industry, I banned over 2 million players. This is absolutely my realm of expertise. And I've never liked kernel level anti-cheat, ever. I think that it's ridiculous. No, no, it's not a necessary evil. There are so many other ways to do detection, and we have, throughout the history of games. And I know that because I'm one of the people who helped write them. That was the whole point. I was one of the guys sitting there pulling down every bot that worked for every MMO that we worked on, everything at Blizzard, grabbed every single one of those, pulled it out into assembly, grabbed the code K from it, removed the polymorphic, found a way to fit it into Warden, and then banned hundreds of thousands of people. And you know what? We didn't need kernel level anti-cheat for that. Ryder Cadenhouse basically says that there is a massive difference between a hyper competitive game which requires a speedy response to cheats versus an MMO that primarily has to deal with botting. Riot Sakar also outlines this distinction. In Riot's article they mentioned that the most common form of cheating in modern league is not exploits but scripting. They show a graph of the percentage of games with scripters or bots in them, which is the blue line that you can see has been increasing dramatically since 2022, with a couple of dips but it's still a lot more than it used to be. And the number of cheaters is somewhere between 5% to 15% of total games which is surprisingly high. The yellow bars are ban waves with the largest ban waves being about 300,000 banned accounts. Globally there are scripters or bots in as many as 1 in 15 games and in some regions this number is as high as 1 in 5. Scripter win rates hover around 80% in ranked games and when separated by ELO Grandmaster and Master seem to have the highest proportion of scripters in their games. Which makes sense if their win rates are so high and it's clearly a bigger problem in higher elos. Riots say that they can't see how the trend continues because the current anti-cheat called Pac-Man is beaten. The graph only shows detected cheaters so it seems current cheaters have gotten better at being undetected. Which brings us to Vanguard. Cheaters have advanced so much that Vanguard is now considered necessary to keep up with them. Their current anti-cheat Pac-Man isn't sustainable and there's been a big jump in manual bans making it impossible to keep up with the cheaters. Basically the best anti cheat is the fastest acting one. The number of ranked games a cheater plays in league before getting banned has crept up to almost 40 games. And for Valorant this number hovers below 20 games, which still seems higher than it should but shooter game cheats are a lot more sophisticated. The next graph shows that even when Vanguard ban actions dramatically increase they're still able to maintain a relatively low percentage of games with cheaters in them. And this is where Riot see the potential of Vanguard's effectiveness in league. Vanguard should put a significant debt in the account selling and boosting 
housing market and help tackle smurfing. And an interesting point, they said that once Vanguard has been effective, they might look at making mechanically rewarding champs more balanced around their combos, timing windows and executes. So if you main these champs and are skilled at them, then Riot might balance them in your favour. Then they answer some commonly asked questions. Vanguard is not really running all the time. It loads at boot but doesn't really do anything before you run a game, apart from making sure nothing is breaking the operating system. Riot say that Vanguard isn't spyware and each region has to adhere to its own specific policy and regulatory requirements. Basically, Vanguard legally can't spy on you because it would break US or whatever country's laws. Tencent and Cien have their own version of Vanguard and Riot don't share Vanguard, its code or anti-cheat data with them. They talk about false positives and the people who claim them, ordered from the most likely reason. The top reason is people are basically just lying about it in their ticket. The next reasons are using a smurf to cheat or the account has been shared with a cheater or they queued up with a booster who cheated. So be careful who you duo with. The account was stolen, they used cheating software for a different game but Vanguard still picked it up or there is malware on the computer as the least likely reasons. Mac users won't need Vanguard. Third party tools should be fine as long as they only use the official API and do not use the client's memory. There could be technical issues if you're using pirated software especially ones that require you to turn off Windows Defender to run. You don't necessarily have to stop using them but if any technical issues occur make sure to include this in your support tickets. If you're worried about data collection data can still technically be retrieved from user mode and the client now anyway so Vanguard won't make a difference. If you really are worried about data collection then you probably shouldn't play the game anyway. Riot don't have the goal of collecting your personal information. The only data they collect is what's needed to simply run and secure their games. There were some more comments made by rioters on Reddit. Someone who is very skeptical about Vanguard said they will not update the game for a few weeks to see how it goes. And a couple of writers said this is a reasonable and base stance to have. Someone was worried about auto hotkeys that they use for other games. And Riot say that AHK trigger bots are a form of cheating in Valorant, but they don't target them. However, they also can't ensure a long term compatibility. As a safety measure, you might have to restart the computer after using it for other games. Tools that use the API in an authorized way like Porofessor will be okay, and non malicious uses of AHK should be fine too. The steps to turning off Vanguard will be to right click it in the system tray and click exit Vanguard then yes. You can even uninstall it each time if you really want to. As for champs that use scripts the most Cogmore, Zeri and Jinx are top 3 with Zareth being 8th. You don't have to upgrade to Windows 10 for Vanguard and the compatibility pop up will go live for everyone next week. Overall the blog was well written and had a lot of info, I'll post a link below if you want to read more. Something I found interesting is how far things like AI or other forms of cheats could go to avoid anti-cheat detection. Linus Tech Tips posted this a couple of months ago. One AI-enabled product that has sparked debate, even controversy in the gaming community, is MSI's AI-enabled monitor, which, as you can see, is popping up indicators completely independent of your operating system or your game files whenever there is an enemy hero coming into the frame in League of Legends. Now, MSI makes the argument that this isn't cheating because all it's doing is watching the minimap for you, so in theory it's not doing anything a skilled player couldn't already do on their own, but by that logic, why not highlight your opponents in CS2 or draw an AI-generated racing line in Mario Kart? Of course, all of these things exist already. The difference is that it's being handled by a neural processor inside the monitor, making it impossible for the game developer to detect. Now, from my tone, you can probably tell how I feel about AI assistants that unlevel the playing field, but I also see the argument from the other side. Is it really any different from having a higher quality mouse or a better internet connection? Whichever side you're on, it's clear that League of Legends opponent detection is just the tip of the iceberg here, with MSI claiming that users will be able to train an AI model on different games, or in the future, even on the audio that streams through the monitor to unlock new gaming advantages. So, ready or not, it comes. Having something like that built into monitors is pretty crazy, so it'll be interesting to see how this develops over the next few years. Thanks for watching, see you next time.